Matt Rutter is at the helm of Australia's largest rock lobster exporter, which sends premium seafood to the world from its base in Western Australia. So the Australian lobster is considered the pinnacle of lobsters worldwide. So Australian lobster is, is highly sought after for its colour, for its flesh and uh, firmness and taste, as well as the fact that it doesn't have claws, so it has a much higher meat yield compared to, um, for instance, the US lobster. Fresh caught lobsters are held here near Perth Airport in a state-of-the-art processing facility. So the Welsh Bull facility is what we call a recirculating seawater system. So what we try to do is to mirror the ocean environment. So the, the main purpose of this facility is as a staging point on the way to live export. So we want to make sure that the product's maintained in pristine condition before we send it off to our customers around the world. So we have around about 80 tonne of storage at the Welsh Bull facility, so that equates on average, depending on the size of the animal, equates to around about 160,000 lobsters. The fish's fleet operates under licence along 1,000 kilometres of pristine coastline, as it has done for decades. Gerald and Fisherman's Co-op was formed in 1950 by a group of fishermen who wanted to take control of their own supply chain. We're now over 70 years old and proudly still fisherman owned, so we are a cooperative, we're not a company, which means that we operate solely for the benefit of our fishers who operate up and down the coast of Western Australia. Their focus is on one species, highly prized by fine dining chefs, especially in Asia. It's highly sought after for sashimi in particular. As a business, we make up 70% of the Western Rock Lobster industry. And as a business, we have around about 350 members, which are fishing families up and down the coast of WA. Sustainability is key to this operation, preserving lobster stocks for the future. The Western Rock Lobster industry is quota managed, which means that each year the volume that the fishers catch is fixed and is governed very tightly by um, our state government. So the fishers are not allowed to catch lobsters until they get to about four years of age and, and legal size, from four years all the way up to 20 to 25 years old. We were the first fishery in the world to be MSC certified. Amid rising demand for Western rock lobster, short flight times to Asia led to a growing stream of live exports heading north. We can get the product to market within 24 hours uh, to most Asian countries in particular, which, which is um, perfect for live export. However, like all Australian lobster exporters, the cooperative has recently faced major export disruption. So the, the last couple of years have been extremely challenging for us. Obviously with COVID, we were one of the first industries to uh, be affected by the pandemic. And then more recently, we've also uh, had issues with trade disputes in our region as well. So before COVID, roughly 97% of our product was exported to China. No one likes losing uh, their biggest customer overnight. Um, it certainly was a significant um, commercial disruption, uh, one that wasn't foreseen. Export revenues for the industry have dropped by 50 to 60% since the start of the pandemic. Hi, David. Hi, How are you going? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you again, even though... Matt has worked closely with Austrade, Australia's international trade promotion and investment agency, to find a way forward. So Thailand um, has just implemented some new health, health certificate um, protocols, which is going to be really positive for us moving forward into that market. Thailand would be one of the main growth markets, again, because of the hospitality and tourism sector and the demand that is, is driven out of uh, those hotels and restaurants. The challenge is that no market's going to replace China in terms of the sheer volume of demand. You know, we're all hoping for 2022 to open up a bit further. Do you think... Uh... So having their team on the ground, helping us with research, talking to the customers and helping to bridge that gap during the pandemic was really important. So if there's a silver lining um, from these disruptions and from the pandemic, we are reaching more consumers internationally with this seafood delicacy out there and hopefully that will sort of stand us in, in better stead for the long term.
Moving forward means adapting to changing global demand. What we've seen in the last couple of years is a move more back to a larger proportion of our exports going frozen again. So we've just undertaken a major capital works project in Fremantle to develop out the site so that we can produce much higher volumes of frozen product to service that demand. But happily, as a result of all of that change, we've maintained our staff through all of the challenges. So 2022 is looking um, a lot more positive for us. We are now exporting to a greater number of countries, um, much more diversified number of products. I would say that we're future-proofed. No matter what the world throws at us, we can ebb and flow with that.